whenever those come to thee who believe in our signs, whenever the moments approach you, whenever the Muslims approach you, wish them assalamu alaikum. How can I follow this guidance unless I recognize that the person in front of me is a Muslim or not? People may ask me, that brother Zakir, is it a fard? Is it compulsory to keep a beard and to wear a cap? I have not come across a single verse in the glorious Quran which says that it is a fard to keep a beard. There's not a single verse in the glorious Quran. The only place where the Quran mentions about the beard is in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 94, which says, Qala abna umma. He said, Aaron, peace be upon him, tells his elder brother, Moses, peace be upon him. He said, that, O oh son of my mother, la taqhuz bilihyati wala birasa. Don't hold me by my beard or by the hair on my head. This is the only verse in the glorious Quran which mentions the word beard. Aaron, peace be upon him, tells his elder brother Moses, peace be upon him, when he gets angry, that don't hold me by my beard or by the hair on my head, indicating that Harun alayhi salam, Aaron, peace be upon him, had a beard. That's all. This verse doesn't say that it's compulsory for every Muslim to keep a beard. But the glorious Quran says in several places, Atiullah wa Rasul, in several places. In Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 32. In Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 132. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 59. In Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 92. In Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 1. In Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 20. In Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 46. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 54. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 56. In Surah Muhammad, chapter number 47, verse number 33. In Surah Mujadila, chapter number 58, verse number 13. In several places, including Surah Taqaboon, chapter number 64, verse number 12, the glorious Quran says, Atiullah, what's your Rasul? Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. It's compulsory that every Muslim should obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7. In the book of dress, chapter number 64, hadith number 780, Nafi, may Allah be pleased with him, he narrated that Ibn Umar, the son of Umar, said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that do the opposite of what the pagans do. Keep the beard and cut the mustaches short. It's a commandment of the beloved Prophet that keep the beard and cut the mustaches short. It's further mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, in the book of dress, chapter number 65, hadith number 781, that Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he narrates that the messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, said that cut your mustaches short and leave your beard. Most of the scholars say that keeping a beard is mustahab. Mustahab means highly recommended. Or some people say, sunnat e It's a highly recommended sunnah of the beloved Prophet. While there are many other scholars who say that because the Quran says, Atiullah, Atiur Rasul, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, any commandment of the Messenger becomes a fard on every Muslim. So there are many scholars who say that keeping a beard is fard. Many scholars say it is mustahab. Highly recommended, while some scholars say, many others say, that it is a fard because it's an amar, it's a commandment of the beloved Prophet. Any commandment of the beloved Prophet becomes a fard on every Muslim. But any Muslim, if he's a true Muslim, irrespective whether it's mustahab or a fard, he will keep a beard. There are many Muslims on whose faith the beard will suit very well if they have a good growth. There are many Muslims on whose faith the beard may not suit. I remember the first time when I kept a beard, when I was studying in the medical college, 
and my growth was very sparse. Even now, it's not thick, it is the same, but previously it was more sparse, you know, just a few here, here and there. So when I started keeping a beard, one of our Muslim brothers said, MashaAllah, you have a Nurani chara. the beard has thrown light on your face and the beard suits you. What the Muslim brother was trying to do was to encourage me that I should continue keeping the beard, Alhamdulillah. But I knew that as far as looks is concerned, the beard did not suit me. You know, just few hairs here and few hairs here and a few hairs there, it didn't suit me. Even now, after so many years, it has grown a bit, Alhamdulillah. But not like many of us people who have got a good growth, Alhamdulillah. I had a sparse growth. But I have a logic, and I say, that those Muslims who have a good growth, and if the beard suits them, and they keep the beard, inshallah, they will get the sawab because they're being Allah and his messenger. But those Muslims who don't have a good growth, and if the beard doesn't suit them, and yet, if they keep the beard to follow Allah and his Rasul, inshallah, they will get more sawab. Because imagine, even though the beard doesn't suit me, if the beard doesn't suit a Muslim, yet he keeps for the love of Allah and his Rasul. I consider that inshallah, he will get more sawab. All those who keep the beard will get the sawab, but the person on whom the beard doesn't suit, and yet he keeps it, knowing very well it doesn't suit him, for the love of Allah and his Rasul, he will get multiple times more sawab. And for additional, for additional assurance, we have another label. I'm referring to the cap. People may ask me, that is it a fard to wear a cap? There is no verse in the glorious Quran saying that it's a fard to wear a cap. Neither did our prophet said that it's a fard to wear a cap. So I wouldn't say it's a fard. But it is a sunnah. And if you read Sahih Bukhari, verse number seven in the book of dress, Chapter number 16, it's mentioned according to Ibn Abbas that the beloved Prophet Muhammad when he came, he wore a black turban. The Prophet, whenever he went out, he always covered the head, unless he was in a state of ahram, he always covered the head. According to Anas bin Malik, he said that when the Prophet came out, he covered the head with a part of his garment. Further, if you read in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, in the book of dress, chapter number 17, hadith number 699, Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that in the year of the conquest of Mecca, when the Prophet entered Mecca, he was wearing a helmet. The Prophet always covered his head. So it is a sunnah to cover your head, whether it be with a piece of cloth or like a head covering with the Arabs wear or a cap. And the muhaddis, those who are experts in the knowledge of hadith, if they have to verify whether the rawi, whether the person who narrated is a sikka, is true or not, many of the muhaddis who are staunch, they do not regard the hadith of a narrator who did not cover his head. Means if a narrator did not cover his head, the staunch Mahdi say, we will not accept his hadith. So imagine it is a sunnah to cover the head. And the cap, it is so cheap. It is so cheap. You know, hardly costs about 10 rupees, 15 rupees or 20 rupees. The one that I am wearing, it's made in China, costs about 25 rupees. It's a harmless thing. It cannot even hurt a fly. It is so harmless, but it can do wonders. It can do wonders. And I normally keep on traveling. Alhamdulillah, I keep on traveling in various parts of the world. And people, when they see me, especially when I go to the Western country, who is this man, you know, fine looking man, wearing a coat, coat and trousers and wearing a cap. It looks a bit funny. And many people who aren't aware, they ask me, what is this cap? So I tell him, it's the sign, it's my label. I'm a Muslim. Oh, you're a Muslim. An opportunity to dawah, which is a farz in Islam, an opportunity. People wonder, what is this person, you know, wearing a funny type of headgear? 
They come and approach you. They are giving you an opportunity to open your mouth. It does wonders. People start respecting you, alhamdulillah. It's a harmless thing. It can't even hurt a fly, but it does wonders. And if suppose you're working in an office, which is being owned by a non-Muslim, and if suppose he does not like you wearing the cap, it's very easy. Take it out and keep it in your pocket. But the moment the office time is over, you can wear your cap back. It's your right. He's only paying you for eight or 10 hours that you're working for him. But the moment you come out, you can wear the cap. It's preferable to wear it always, but suppose you have a certain problem that you have to work in that office and if it doesn't allow you, no problem, take out the cap and keep it in the pocket. It does wonders. You know, when we go to the mosque, Alhamdulillah, we see that the majority of the Muslims, they wear the cap, Alhamdulillah. But when they come out, most of them put it in the pocket. Why? What's the problem? Are you afraid to identify yourself with Muslims outside? Are you afraid? What are you afraid of? In the mosque, Alhamdulillah, you wear the cap. But when you come out, you put the label in your pocket. See, in the mosque, people recognize you're a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, you should even wear it there. But when you come out, why do you keep it in your pocket?